In the 1990s, Jonathan Taylor Thomas had it all. A part in the decade's biggest family sitcom, starring roles in blockbuster movies, on the walls of every teenage girl's bedroom, and the cover boy of so many teen magazines. He was everywhere. But as the 90s came to a close, so did Jonathan Taylor Thomas' time in the spotlight. Not because of a massive media scandal or a huge public breakdown, he just vanished. And outside of a few guest appearances and one sighting in 2021, he has been DOA since the end of the 90s. My name is Smiley King, and today I'm going to be looking into the rise, peak and fall of Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and how he went from one of the biggest teen idols of the 90s to completely irrelevant and forgotten today. So let's start from the beginning. Jonathan Taylor Thomas made his acting debut in 1990's The Brady's, a short-lived The Brady's Bunch spin-off series that was cancelled after only six episodes due to low ratings. The following year, he appeared in three episodes of Fox's sketch comedy series In Living Colour, in forgettable minor roles. But later that year, he was cast in the role that made him a star in Home Improvement as Randy Taylor, the sarcastic middle child. Home Improvement was a family sitcom that followed Tim the tall man Taylor, a man's man and his motherly wife Jill, raising their three boys, Randy, Brad and Mark in the suburbs. Right from the get-go, the show was a huge hit, finishing its first season as the fourth biggest show on television and Jonathan Taylor Thomas became the breakout star of the show. JTT, as everyone called him back then, was great in this show. The sarcastic character is not an easy character to play, especially if you're a kid. JTT played the character perfectly. It's actually one of my favorite portrayals of a character in a sitcom. If we made 90 bucks a day, we work for seven days, we'd make like 200 bucks. <laughs> Brad, your math tutor must be proud. <laughs> Throughout the early 90s, JTT became more and more popular as the show became a bigger hit. He also began his reign as the 90s teen cover boy around this time. Back in the 90s, being able to sell a magazine was a huge deal. And Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the teen king of selling magazines. If you ran a teen magazine in the 90s and you put Jonathan on the cover, it was guaranteed to sell well. By the mid 1990s, Jonathan Taylor Thomas had become the biggest teen star on television and the number one teen idol in the world and Hollywood wanted to capitalise on the JTT mania taking over the world at this point. The first attempt at this was casting him as young Simba in Disney's The Lion King. That movie came out in 1994 and I don't think I need to remind anybody how huge a success The Lion King was. JTT's movie star career was off to a great start. In 1995, he starred in two movies. Man of the House and Tom and Huck, his first real test. If these movies were a success, it would prove to Hollywood that JTT could bring his huge teenage fan base to the box office. If they flopped, it would mean the opposite. Man of the House, which he starred in alongside Chevy Chase and Farrah Fawcett, was panned by critics but doubled its $22 million budget at the box office. Tom and Huck where he played Tom Sawyer and starred alongside fellow 90s teen idol Brad Renfro, was more popular among critics, but made less than Man of the House, grossing just $23.9 million at the box office. So to sum up his first year as a movie star, it wasn't the best, but it didn't really matter. He was still selling magazines like No Other Teenager and Home Improvement was averaging 40 million viewers an episode, and had finished for the fourth year in a row in the top five. Flop movies aside, this was the peak of JTT mania. It was all downhill from here. In 1996, for the first time, Home Improvement did not finish the season in the top 5. It went from the number 3 show in the world to the number 7 show. Also in 1996, he voiced the lead character Pinocchio in Disney's The Adventures of Pinocchio. The film was a huge bomb opening at number 8 on opening weekend and going on to make just $15 million at the box office. The movie's budget was $25 million. This was the turning point in Jonathan Taylor Thomas's career. Home improvement continued to decline in viewership each year as newer and fresher TV shows captured the public's attention 
and the once popular home improvement became a stale and repetitive shadow of itself. And any future that saw Jonathan Taylor Thomas turn magazine sales into box office ticket sales was quickly shut down. His movies Wild America and I'll Be Home for Christmas flopped. He was on his way out, and choosing to leave home improvement in 1998 sped up his decline. No one knows for sure why he chose to leave home improvement, turned down appearing in the last episode, and snubbed the cast for a decade afterwards. Everyone has their own theories, including me, but that's a topic for another video. JTT was now without a stable job and past his teen idol prime. In Hollywood's eyes, he was no longer useful. So that's probably why outside of a few guest appearances and some indie movie roles, he decided to go to university and pretty much disappear. And when I say disappear, I mean disappear. Since 2005, I think I can count on one hand how many times he's been seen. Stardom is fickle, child stardom even more so. One moment you're the hottest thing on the planet, the next moment you're a has-been. JTT had reigned as the 90s teen it boy, but like every teen idol before him, his moment had passed and his career was over. Once upon a time, the biggest teen heartthrob on the planet, JTT is now a relic from a bygone era. Home improvement, as popular as it once was, has not stood the test of time the same way other 90s sitcoms have. And other than Lion King, none of his movies are really remembered by anyone. His legacy today is as the star of video essays and articles about how he was once a huge star in the 90s and is now completely off the grid. But I still wouldn't say that JTT has been forgotten or is irrelevant. While his roles haven't stood the test of time, he has. Those video essays and articles about how irrelevant he is now all have hundreds and thousands of views. Every time he's photographed it's a huge deal and to an entire generation of women he was their first crush. So the JTT mania of the 90s is long over, but JTT mania is still alive, it's just different now. Instead of screaming fans and magazine covers, it's video essays, articles and the hundreds of thousands of people that consume them every time. JTT the person might have disappeared and been forgotten, but JTT the 90s superstar teen remains very relevant, not as the cover boy of countless magazines, but instead the cover boy of countless YouTube videos and internet articles.